In this video, we're going to talk about operations with radicals. We're going to add and subtract them, multiply them, and divide them. To add and subtract radicals, the radicand, remember that's the number under the radical symbol, must be the same. If they're not the same, you can simplify each radical and see if they are now the same, and then sometimes they are already simplified as they are. So let's take a look at this first one. The radicand must be the same. So square root of six and square root of six. So these are the same, so I can actually add them as they are. If you think of this square root of six as x, and this square root of six is the same x, then it's x plus 3x, which is 4x. And the same is true of the radicals. There's an understood 1 in front of the radical, and you just add the coefficients. 1 plus 3 is 4. And notice the x, when I added the x's together, it still was x. It's going to be the same here. 1 square root of 6 plus 3 square root of 6. You have 4 of those square roots of 6. And that's it. Now, on this one, they do not have the same radicand. 1 is 7 and 1 is 6. And neither one of those numbers can be simplified. Neither one of those radicals can be simplified. And so this is already simplified because that's actually a thing that you can't actually add or subtract them. Let's look at one more adding and subtracting one. Add or subtract. 3 square root of 18 plus 5 square root of 8. So the radicands aren't the same, but they might simplify. So let's do our factor ladder. Dividing in prime numbers and putting our results here. Prime numbers go here, results of division goes here. Ha! So 3 square root of 18 becomes 3. That's from this guy right here. And then these two, when I take the square root of them and pull them outside of the radical, there's just one 3 for that pair, and then there's still a 2 left in the radical. Let's do the same thing for 8. You actually might already have it memorized if you've been practicing simplifying radicals. 2 goes into 8 4 times, 2 goes into 4 2 times, 2 square roots of 2. That's a pretty common one. So there was a 5 already out there. And then we're going to have a pair of twos that we can put one two on the outside and then one single two on the inside. So square root of eight is two square roots of two. And now I have the same radicand. Woo! So let's go ahead and multiply these first and then we'll add them together. So nine square roots of two plus 10 square roots of two is 19 of those babies. And that's your answer. And you can always double check this. If you type this in your calculator, you're going to get a decimal because it's irrational. And then if you type this in your calculator, the whole problem, you're going to get the same decimal. And that means you probably did it correctly. It's, it, there's a chance you didn't simplify it correctly. Um, and you still got the same answer. But it's a good clue, maybe, that you got it right. For multiplying and dividing radicals, the radicands don't need to be the same. Just like we can multiply x times x squared, but we can't add x plus x squared. Same thing here. We can multiply things that don't have the same radicand. <clears throat> same thing for dividing. You can simplify and then multiply or multiply and then simplify. So I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. Okay, so multiplying this out, I'm going to multiply this one times this one because this is terms. We have two terms here, so we have to distribute to each term. We're going to multiply square root of 6, and I'm going to put the radicals next to each other because they're friends and they like to be next to each other. And I'm going to put the square root of 6 inside this guy. Remember, the commutative property means I can multiply these in any order, so it's okay to put these two next to each other, and it's okay to put these two next to each other. Now, <clears throat> if you want, you can simplify and then multiply. So I could make this the square root of 2 times 3 times 2. Okay, actually, let me back up a second. Notice that I can only take radical times radical. I'm not going to multiply the radical 6 times 3 and make it 18. I can only, everybody, everybody say that, I can only multiply radical times radical. 
If you just have a plain number, then you'll just write them next to each other in a multiplication expression without actually multiplying them. Okay, all right, so I broke the six down into two and three, you see that? And I left the two alone. So I basically did the prime factorization on the six. And I see I have a pair of twos that I can bring out and leave the three inside. So that's six square roots of three. Same thing over here. Six is still two times three. And then we have this other three over here that we're allowed to multiply in, but this time we have a three that we can pull out. The square root of three times three is three. Plus sign there. Five times three is 15 square root of two. And then that's all we can do on that one. We can't add them together because they don't have the same radical. It's always good to see another way to do this. So I'm going to show you, um, this was simplifying before I multiply, kind of. And I'm going to show you if I just went ahead and multiplied them. So 3 and then make that the square root of 12 plus 5 square root of 18. And then you're going to end up with the same answer because you're going to take 18 and what you're going to do is you're going to turn around and break it into 2 and 3. So maybe it's easier to break it down before you multiply because your numbers are bigger. But I just wanted to show you that you can do it where you just multiply them and then simplify what you get. And then 12 kind of went different order there in my, with my uh, primes. But here's my pair. I write one, two for the pair and three on the inside. So this is six square roots of three plus 15 square root of two. And I know it looks like I did less steps over here, but I really didn't because I did, I did actually drew out the factor ladders. All right, last part is to talk about the division. Division is the same way. I can divide and then simplify or simplify and then divide. So if I take, I'm going to go a couple of different directions with this one. So first, I could just take 20 divided by 4. They're both under the radical, or sometimes you'll see the radical go all the way to the bottom and up. <clears throat> but they're both under the radical, so I can just divide them and get the square root of 5. And that's it. That can't be simplified anymore. If I didn't see that, maybe I see, ooh, the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, good. But then I need to simplify the square root of 20. So 20. And you're like, why would you need another way to do this? Because some of you won't see that you can divide those, and you might go this direction, and I want to show you that you can end up in the same, same place. So that's 2 square roots of, of 5 oops, over 2. And then the 2s we can cancel, and we get down to square root of 5. You also might have thought about rationalizing the denominator, but I wouldn't go rationalizing the denominator until you check and make sure that the denominator isn't already a perfect square. And it is already a perfect square, so I can just go ahead and take the square root of it, or I can divide it into 20. <clears throat> okay, so this is, this is the answer to that one. And then one more, we have 4 square roots of 5 over 2. Do you see what you could do? 4 divided by 2. Is two. And that's it. Simplified.